Hello, my name's Chris, and I'm going to be talking you through the basic usage of Show Magic. Okay, when you first start Show Magic, you're presented with this screen. Now, I've already set up a few things before I start the video, including I've set my own fixtures up already. Um, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, as I want to show you how to set up scenes and how to use scenes in a sequence to make ha have lighting chains occur at certain times. So, first things first. Show Magic has a dual pane display, which means that uh, each view on each half of the screen is completely separate. But this, uh, obviously, if something happens on one side of the screen, is mirrored on the other side, as you can see. Right, so we'll go back to how it was before. I'll talk you through the panes individually. This is the uh, action button pane. We'll come to that later on. When you have your lights set, this is the fixture pane. You can control your lights using these sliders here. When your lights are hooked up to a USB to DMX converter, then adjusting these sliders will adjust your lights live. So you can see exactly what you're doing, which is really useful if you're programming. Uh, these particular lights I've got set up are a set of LED PAR cans, which are four channel DMX lights. The first three channels represent the colors uh, and the intensity and the fourth channel is a control channel. But for the sake of the argument, we're going to pretend this is a dimmer. Okay, so you've got your lights set up, you've got some kind of response from these. Next thing you need to do is you need to set up what they call scenes. Now I've already set up one scene here, which is a green wash. When I double click this button, it automatically jumps to that. To set up a scene, you, re you merely adjust the sliders to whatever you want how you'd like your scene. And then you take a snapshot of it by pressing record and then clicking on where you want to record the scene to. When it turns red, that shows that the scene has been recorded and can be brought back at any time by double clicking on it. To rename it, double click there at the name of the scene and you can rename it to anything you want. For this example, I'm going to call that a red wash. And do the same again, this time for the blue. So I'll bring the blue all the way to the top, my dimmer all the way to the top, record, click on it again, double click on the name, call that a blue wash. So we have the three washes there. When I double click on them, the green LED lights up to show that that's currently active and the lights will be working alongside as well. So now we have three scenes. If you want it to have a smooth gradually fade in and fade out, you need to click here in this box here that'll bring up this screen and you can adjust the in and out times of each individual fader or for everything. Now I generally leave the dimmer out of this one because mine's control panel but for this example we'll have we'll just change the default. Click on the uh, number button and then type in exactly how long you want the fade to happen. For this one I want it to come in over three seconds so three zero zero return. I'd like to fade out again when when I double click out of it, it'll fade out over three seconds as well. There we go. Hit enter, and you'll notice that when I double click on this now, it's a smooth gradual fade in over three seconds. And when I double click to take it away, it does exactly the same three seconds out. This can be overridden as well in each individual sequence, which I'll show you now. Okay, to add um, lighting cues to a piece of music or to an event you need to put them into a sequence. Now Show Magic SL24 allows you to have about 146 sequences, I think, over, spread over two banks and these pages here. To the different kinds of sequences are you've got a manual sequence here. If you can change that to a chase, which is useful. I'll cover chases in a bit. And you can also have a timed sequence. Now timed sequences are brilliant for adding timing cues to a piece of music. To change this, by the way, anything in blue in Show Magic can't be edited unless you hold down the control key. This is to stop uh, unexpected behaviour happening and allows you to lock stuff. So, with the holding down control from manual and pressing the right mouse button puts it into timed. Select the sequence you want to edit, press the edit key. This small window at the top shows what's currently being run at the moment there's nothing in here and this bottom window is the edit window 
which is where you can drag changes and add stuff. Okay. As this is a time sequence, we're going to need to tell it when it needs to stop. So press insert on the keyboard in this window. That will add an end point. Click on the numbers and type in 50000. Zero, 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 zero. This gives you five minutes. You can change that to anything you want, but for this example, five minutes is enough time. Press the insert key a couple more times to add null steps. Null steps are placeholders for where you can put lightning changes in. So once you've put some null steps in, for this example I've got three, drag your scene to the null step. And now we have a basic lighting cue. At the moment, all of these are going to happen at the same time. So we'll leave the green wash at zero because we want that to start the moment we press play. The red wash can come in after five seconds the blue wash can come in after 10 seconds. Okay, So I'll switch the fixture view so you can see what's happening. If I press play, it fades in with a nice green. After 5 seconds it will beat red. Now red jumped straight in there and the green took a while to fade out. And then blue. Now you see we have a small problem there as that green wash hasn't come in straight away and it's interfering with the fade out. What you can do you can adjust that. So if you click on the green wash, hold down the shift key, and you have two different faders suddenly appear at the top here. That's your fade in, and that's your fade out. We'll turn the fade, in, fade out off for this particular sequence. We'll try that again. So press play. It'll fade in nicely over three seconds, but it won't fade out. It'll jump, like so. Now the sequence now will run on its own until it hits five minutes. At five minutes, at that point, it will stop. Bear that in mind because it acts like a blackout. So what we'll do is we'll set that to 15 seconds. Now you can't delete. Uh, what your best bet to zero out is to just type lots and lots of zeros until it disappears. Hit return and then type. If you want 15 seconds, one five zero zero. Hit return. Now I'll play this again, and you'll see the sequence start at zero, and I'll jump to the red, after 10 seconds it will jump to the blue, and then after 15 it will stop and act like a blackout. There we go. And that sequence will stop on its own. Brilliant. You can rename sequences as well using the same sort of uh, naming one there, so we'll change that to sequence one. just for. But you can call that anything you like. Now I'm going to show you now how to add a piece of music to a sequence. Go to the music pane here, or the music view, the music tab. Now this works a slightly different way to the rest of them. You have to select where you want your music to go first. There's three buttons. That's how to add an MP3, a MIDI file, and a track from a CD. We'll double click on the MP3 WAV file button here. Now select a piece of music open it and that will appear as a button here. Now you can double click on that as you can for any sequence to start it. You won't be able to hear the music playing because uh, the screen capture software I have doesn't support MP3 playback but suffice to say it is playing. Now we'd like to add that to our existing sequence so I'll press insert to insert a step at the beginning. We'll leave that at zero zero because music and lights can run at the same time it doesn't affect them. We'll drag that in. Okay. Now when I press play it will start from the beginning, the lights will run, and the music will be running at the same time as well. And after 15 seconds it will stop. Now it will stop after 15 seconds regardless of how long the musical track is. So you need to make sure that's the same length as your musical track. Right. So as you see that stopped after 15 seconds. Which is really useful and uh, gives you a lot of flexibility. Right, I've just about run out of time for this one. So um, I'm going to stop it here, and then I'll pick this up in video number 2, where I'll talk... Uh, in depth about chases and adding stuff to the action button. Thanks a lot.